Welcome and thank you for joining me today. My name is George Shilly and I work at Matrix Marketing Group and I'll be speaking to you about creating a buyer-centric content marketing strategy. A strategy that will help you create content that will drive leads. But before we get started, I still hear the same pain points coming from content producers that I heard over five years ago. Things like I struggle to measure the ROI of my content I create, we're creating a bunch of content but we're not ranking on Google for our targeted keywords, and I've done all my research, now what? So I'm going to answer all these questions and more today. So today, most marketers focus on converting leads into customers, and we can see that on the far right hand bar. And the second one is really growing website traffic, and content marketing can help you with that. In the past, marketing was a cost center, why modern organizations measured marketing against its ability to contribute to the business's bottom line. And over the years, proving marketing ROI has consistently been a challenge for marketers. However, today in the digital marketing world, this is no longer a challenge with the right marketing attribution model. You can see how your content marketing spend is attributed directly to sales. Now over here, we can see these figures, and these come from my friends over at Adobe Marketing, and they shared this with me. And we can see the marketing objectives at the left of the chart, and the bars are colored in blue and gray. The blue represents the importance, and the gray, the performance. And today, since we're talking about content marketing, let's stick with that, and let's look at the third line called content management. So today, I'll be talking about content marketing, so let's stick with that. Here we can see the importance is high, and that's at 76%, yet the performance is lagging behind at 36%, and that's a 40% gap. What's yours? You know, you, you're most likely here to learn more about how you can lower this gap for your company. So let's see how we can do that. But before we get started, we have to talk about SEO. How do, how do you approach SEO today? Are you doing keyword research, adding these to your title, your H1 tags, your meta descriptions, your alt tags, etc. And this is the simple stuff and should be hygiene today. It should be like brushing your teeth. And there's a whole host of tools to help you do that. Yoast for SEO is a plugin for WordPress, and Rainmaker and HubSpot have them integrated right into their CMS platforms. But there's so much more to inch up on Google search and get to the top of the page. You could purchase PPC campaigns, but these only last as long as your budget does. And most people are really starting to begin to ignore these ads. So let's dive into the topic, content marketing. Today I'm covering the following topics. Why a new approach to SEO? How do we approach this, these changes? Steps to develop a content marketing plan? And the next steps. Participants will walk away with an understanding of the framework to address the challenging landscape of content marketing and SEO as well. So why a new approach to SEO? If you haven't noticed, Google is changing their search algorithm all the time, and not with just major rollouts like Penguin and Panda. Search on stories about Black Hat SEO and see what happened to companies that employed a strategy like that. And recently while in Boulder, Colorado, just the other day, I was with a prospect, and he was very concerned that his lead flow from organic search had dropped from 50 to 60 leads per month to well below 10. And he asked me, he goes, what happened? So after running a few simple tests on their page ranking, I noticed that it slipped to, they were on the 10th page and some of the keywords that they were looking for were even further down the, the, the chain on Google search. So I want to know why. And after doing a qualitative research on their content, they had developed thin, thin content and employed a keyword stuffing strategy. And that's the fastest way to get to Google's penalty box, and man, it's hard to recover. Follow the strategies outlined in this presentation, and you'll recover from mishaps like this. Or better yet, you'll avoid them altogether and rank higher than your competitors. Today, you must understand Google Search and develop a solid content marketing plan around that. Think about query-driven searches, rank brain, and other factors affecting your ranking it's the only way to get and win in today's digital world. You know, the searcher has changed, and they've changed significantly with the rise of mobile, voice search, and long tail keywords. Do you own an Amazon Echo, a smartphone, or have you ever used Siri? 
And maybe you just on the computer and do a search. Yeah, you know, do a search on manufacturing marketing strategies. Type it in and see what comes up. One of the greatest benefits of content marketing is its ability to play matchmaker to help eligible businesses find and engage with its desirable customers. For example, those who might have an active interest in what you have to offer. And because it's such a powerful driver of awareness, search is one of the main contributing factors to how successful your content will be in attracting the qualified leads that fit your business. 44% of B2B and B2C marketers have a challenge producing engaging content. And these figures are kind of alarming, especially if you're employing a digital strategy. So, you know, do you go in and talk to a client or decision maker or prospect without a content strategy? Or are you trying to create content that your audience will consume, share, and love? Think about who are you writing for? What are your objectives for doing this? And what are the business outcomes that you want? And then flip it on the other side and, and find out really what are your target audience consuming and what do they want to know? So really let's look at from a content marketing framework, you know, what does this change mean? And I get this question all the time, is SEO dead? No, SEO is not dead, but it requires a totally different mindset and skill set from the old SEO firms. You know, these firms were typically not content marketing or journalists, but may be able to help with keyword research. Search engines have evolved significantly over the past years. While at the same time, individuals are now using long tail searches. As a result, searches move beyond just keywords and focuses on topics overall. And creating content around topic areas helps create your area of influence and attracts your desired customers. You must think and act like a journalist and meet the audience, your readers, objectives. Now here are the steps to help you get started. You know, study, your, study your personas, develop core topics, create pillar content. Research cluster subtopics, create subtopic content, and create link architecture. And then finally, analyze those results regularly. By developing an understanding up front about your core audience, this will help you develop the right content and distribute it at the right time. You must have a deep understanding of the core audience, their jobs, their pains, and their gains. You know, the jobs describe the things your customers are trying to get done in their life. Pains describe anything that annoys your customers before, during, and after trying to get a job done or simply prevents them from getting the job done at all. And finally, gains describe the outcomes and benefits that your customers want. Your core topic should be highly relevant to your business and should be headtail terms. For example, here at Matrix Marketing Group, a core topic could be predictable revenue. Subtopics are really long tail queries that should be focused around questions your buyers are typically asking. And for us, it could be, how do I get predictable revenue? Or maybe, what are predictable revenue strategies? What is pillar content? It's centered around a specific head tail keyword. It's a simple piece of large content that can be broken down into smaller pieces, which each smaller piece can stand on its own. The goal here is for your readers to take action. And if you don't have pillar content, I suggest that you take a closer look at it. Now here we can see uh, an overview of how to kind of develop some pillar content. This is a method we use to help develop subtopic clusters for content that we develop here at Matrix Marketing Group. First, start with the main topic. Next, generate subtopics around your main topic. And finally, generate a hyperlink structure around your main topic. Ideally, your core topic is the authoritative source on any chosen topic. For example, again, here at Matrix Marketing Group's page, we call the, our pillar pages hubs. We have a marketing hub, a sales hub, executive hub, and a finance hub, and they're all created around the personas of each of those people. At the bottom of that page, you can see links to conversion-oriented content. Each subtopic should be linked back to your core topic. This gives a clear hierarchy of search engines crawling your site, and also delivers some authoritative from initial backlinks. I use tools to help me like Buzzsumo, 
Google AdWords, Google Trends, HubSpot, Moz, SEMrush, and I use a few more. Make a list of as many subtopics as possible that bring value to your core topic. This is a method we use to develop subtopic clusters for content we develop. I begin with an in-depth text analysis to be sure I've added the right short and long tail keywords and phrases. Now creating subtopic content. When creating your content, be sure to understand your persona's jobs. Create a customer profile that describes a specific customer segment in your business model in a more structured and detailed way. Should break down the customer down into the jobs, pains, and gains as I mentioned earlier. Now you achieve fit when your content value map meets your customer profiles. When your products and services produce pain relievers and gain creators that match one or more of their jobs, pains, or gains that are important to your customer. And this is a very important concept to understand. Let's talk about link architecture. Internal links are most useful for establishing site architecture and spreading link juice. And URLs are also essential. For this reason, this section is about building a SEO-friendly site architecture with internal links. On an individual page, search engines need to see content in order to list pages in their massive keyword-based indices. They also need to have access to crawlable link structures, a structure that lets spiders browse the pathways of your website in order to find all the pages on the website. To get a peek into what your site's link structure looks like, try running your site through Open Site Explorer. I pulled this up because it's a new tool uh, created by HubSpot. It's baked right in their system. And with this content strategy tool, it'll help you discover, validate, and execute on content that actually generates results. You know, there's no more wasting time in outdated strategies that don't work. This content strategy tool helps you get the right content. The tool allows you to discover topics on your own. You can search as you move through the keywords. Clusters of content are organized under a topic, and they're now defined based off your influence in the eyes of the search engine. And with HubSpot's content strategy tool, you can easily identify topics to go after based on their relevance, competition, and popularity. You can validate your ideas before you even start writing, discover what topics will work, and help generate traffic and leads. Now, no more wasting time on content that doesn't work. Simply enter the topic you want to write about, and the tool does all the research. So let's look at it in action. So for me, I want to talk about marketing for startups. So I'm going to enter that and I'm going to look at what happens. So over here on the left hand side, what we're actually doing is creating a pillar page. And I've talked a little bit about pillar page in this uh, presentation. So I'm going to go beyond that. So ultimate inbound for marketing kit for startups. So I want to attach that. That's content that's right off my website already, off our test site here. So now I want to go into subtopics and start creating. Here's my link architecture. It's hooked up into here and I want to have a subtopic. So what's a subtopic based off marketing for startups? So marketing tips for startups. There's a good one. I want to come over here and sample plans. Yep, that's a good one too. And we'll come over here add a few more marketing automation for startups and I'll add one more over here. Best marketing for startups. So now you can see as this is populated and it's actually going into the search engine looking at the relevant content for marketing for startups and it's building out my topics that I need to write about. So I encourage you to take a look at this uh, tool. If you don't have access to it, uh, give me a call and I can walk you through the system. But it's a really cool tool. Next, analyze your results. Focus on results and not just rank. Review your social metrics. The number of social shares your content receives gives you an idea of how valuable it is to your audience. If they share it with their networks, they found something truly useful that advances the conversation. Then move on to traffic. An effective content marketing strategy helps boost traffic over time. Tracking unique visitors per day, week, or month for each post gives marketers a baseline for success and month-over-month -month growth. Next up, conversion rate. 
Measuring how many readers took a tangible action is the telling indicator of success. Actions such as downloading gated content, signing up for a webinar, or purchasing from your e-commerce site advances leads through the buyer's journey. Also ask, what can my team do to increase engagement and conversations through content? By tracking leads as they move through the funnel, you can deliver more targeted content that expedites the sales process. And finally, look at your team's performance. Measure the performance of individual content creators on your team it can also reveal key insights into effective content creation. You can evaluate whose content drove the most leads, shares, or conversions, then analyze their creative process to determine best practices that your team can implement. Most importantly, you can recognize the value that content creators bring to your organization. So why do this immediately? Too few marketers truly use data-driven content marketing strategies. Setting clear goals and using data as a guide ensures that you are developing the right type of content, getting in front of the right audiences, and understanding its impact in a way that lets you continually optimize your strategy. I refer to this as a three-step framework process, or the three C's, context, connections, and clarity, all of which are grounded in data. Content strategy benefits. As I've worked with hundreds of clients over the years, I've been surprised at how often site structure is overlooked. On one hand, it's one of the most critical aspects of a site's SEO performance. But on the other hand, few webmasters and owners understand what it means to have a site structure that enhances SEO. I'm going to share a few of the reasons why site structure is so critical, and then I'm going to get into how to develop your own SEO-friendly site structure. A good site structure provides your site with site links. And site links are listing format in the SERPs, SERPs, that show your site's main page along with several internal links indented below. A good structure means better crawling. Web crawlers like Googlebot crawls a website structure. Their goal is to index the content in order to return it in search results. The better your site structure, the easier the crawlers can access and index the content. So let's talk about next steps and action items. Now here we can say 53% of the most effective content marketers have a documented marketing strategy and I asked you if you had one so think about that. Before you begin your new content marketing plan follow these following steps. Develop your content marketing plan's mission statement. Build audience personas. A persona is a composite sketch of a key segment of your audience. It characterizes who they are, what their relevant needs are, and the role that they're likely to play in the purchasing process. Get buy-in from the top and throughout your organization. Start building out your strategy. Once you determine your mission, target audience, strategic goals and objectives, the next step is to build a framework that defines how your organization will use content to achieve them. I want to thank everybody for listening today. Now, are you convinced that content marketing will help boost your traffic and leads? Here's a stat. Organizations that blog 20 times a month receive five times more traffic than ones that don't. And once you've gone through the entire process, do it again. Remember, you're not going to get hundreds of thousands of visitors after a few weeks of content marketing. Gaining organic traffic is slow and a systematic process, but it pays off in the end. You engage, you refine, you rework, and you keep at it. This is hard, but with this framework, you've got the knowledge to make it all happen. And if you still need help, give me a call or send me an email. I wish you all the best of luck and thanks again for listening. Join us for part two, August 15th. There we're going to be covering tactical implementation methods to help you with your content marketing. We look forward to having you join us. Thank you again.